G'day, it's Cray from Australian Direct and I want to quickly go through how to charge and maintain our Deep Cycle AGM batteries. Now we're not talking about our start batteries, these are like the Sprinter, these are more like a marathon runner. These start our cars and require high cranking amps really quickly and then the alternator needs to charge them again. Whereas our Deep Cycle batteries are designed to be charged and discharged over a period of time. Charging and discharging the battery Every time you do it, it's called a cycle. So every time you drop it, say, from 12.95, which is full, 13 volts full, down to around about 12 volts. Now remember, we don't want to go down more than 50% the capacity of the battery. So this 120 amp hour battery realistically has 60 usable amp hours of use in it to get the charge rate down to around about 12 volts. Now remember, at 12 volts, we're pretty much looking at flat. 11.55, 12 volts. So we never really want to get there. We'd like to cycle between you know, 13 volts and 12.2 and, and keep it up around that area there. So remember, over discharging the battery is one of the first things that's going to kill your AGM battery. And what's going to happen over a period of time, if you keep dropping it down to dead flat, besides ruining your battery for a start, um, the battery will start to sulfate. Every time you go to charge the battery with a charger, the charger's going to say, yep, the battery's all full and it didn't take very long. You're going to go out camping and it's going to last like three hours. Here we go here, we can see our battery 100% at 13 volts. Um, as we're going down, you know, we can roughly see around about 80% is 12.5 volts. Then we start going down to around about 60%, which is 12.1. And at 50%, we're around about 12.05. And that's when we want to sort of consider the battery needing a full charge. Um, and we don't want to go any lower than that if we don't have to. Don't go down more than 12 volts on one of these batteries. And how do we detect that? Well, for starters, we need to monitor it. And there's a lot of people when I talk to them, hey, what's your battery voltage? I don't know. Everything's still working. First off, a couple of simple things. We can look at one of our watt meters. These are absolutely fantastic to check what battery voltage is. I mean, check this out. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than that. It's almost hands-free. So a watt meter comes in really, really handy. So I can't recommend more to have a good multimeter with you for your setup and it's great to monitor everything. And if you're not too sure, I'll show you how easy it is. So basically, all we need to do, turn your multimeter on. In this particular case, what you want to make sure it's on DC. If you're not too sure, DC is the flat line with the little gaps underneath it. This particular one, I can choose between AC and DC. So I've got it on DC there. And basically, black to black, red to red, and look at that. And that tells us exactly what our battery voltage is. Having something simple as a gauge connected to your battery. You know, something as simple like that in your system that can actually tell what your battery voltage is. But that's one of the first things we need to look at doing is being able to monitor what the voltage is on the battery before we even get started or else we'll never really know. Another awesome device to have in your, um, in your little arsenal against your battery going flat is one of our low voltage disconnects. Now these are so easy to use. All you gotta do is connect up the one side from your battery and now everything else that you're running, your fridge, your lights, you name it, will be protected now and will not let the battery get down to the point where it's gonna be ruined like it can do without it. Now, a lot of people sometimes tend to think, you know, you need a really heavy load like an air compressor or, or a fridge running on it to flatten a battery. Well, something as simple as leaving an LED light on your caravan or your camper trailer when you're finished packed up and you don't realize it or the kids have left it on, it's happened to me, it can drain the battery down to it's absolutely dead flat. And once we get one of these batteries down below the 11 volts, 10, 10 volt mark, it's absolutely buggered. So remember that. These are an absolute awesome idea to have in your system and so easy to connect. So let's look at charging your battery. First off, battery charger. The usual theory is around about 10% of the battery size for the charger itself. So we're looking around about a 10 to 12 amp charger for a 120 amp hour battery. Um, I've got a 20 amp. These batteries can take up to 25 amps. It will do the job just that little bit more quicker. But the whole idea is basically you need a smart charger that can charge and maintain get an AGM battery up to around about 14.7, 14.8 volts, and then be able to drop it down and sit it on float at around about 13.7. Now the basic way that works, it's like filling up a glass. So our, our bulk charge is like filling that glass up nice and quickly and getting right up almost to the top. And then what we want to do, it'll then go into absorption, which is just like 
topping it up right to the very full bit of the glass and then it'll go into its maintained setup. So that's one really good thing about these smart style chargers. Be wary of a charger that actually won't detect the battery voltages like your dad's old one or granddad's old battery charger. If they won't turn off and recognize the battery voltage, they can just overcharge and cook the battery. And that's, that's even worse than um, over discharging the batteries themselves. Now, one other thing I just want people to really, really pay attention to is don't have anything connected to the battery when you're charging with a 240 volt charger. You don't want any loads on it like fridges, even something simple. We want actually no loads on the battery charger itself. So all it is doing is concentrating on the battery voltage and that way it's gonna look after your battery. Now there's a couple other ways obviously you can charge too. When you're out camping, your solar panels, and that's another great thing as well because you know during the day, you're using your fridge and all your other camping items and the solar is charging your battery, getting it up nice and full. And during the night, you're gonna obviously use a little bit of voltage. So once again, you're gonna be tipping out, tipping out a little bit of that water. And as soon as the light comes up in the morning, out goes your solar panels and we start to fill the glass up again and start all over again. So, um, you know, it's really great to have solar when you're charging. I mean, some people do go out for a couple of days or sometimes we can't help bad weather, but having a solar panel is an absolutely fantastic way to know that you're not gonna over discharge this battery and drain it and get it down flat. So that's another good idea having your solar panels. Um, another fantastic thing is having an in-vehicle DC-DC charger. So basically, for those who don't know, a DC-DC charger is basically like your home charger you plug into your power point, but it's using your car's alternator and your, char your car's charging system to charge another battery at the back. So these are absolutely fantastic. I mean, especially if you're driving to different campsites, you might be driving for four or five hours. Once again, your 20 amp charger on one of our DC-DC chargers is gonna keep your battery all topped up and ready for the next use. So these are a fantastic idea as well. And um, you know, camping too, having a generator is always really, really fantastic too. And once again, then using a charger, a smart charger on your generator. Never use the DC output of your generator because once again, it's like your dad's old school battery charger and won't know when the battery's full and it'll just keep charging and charging and charging. So a good, a good alternator with a good smart charger too is a great way to keep your batteries fully charged while you're camping. Okay, so that pretty much sums up how to charge and maintain your AGM battery. Remember the first rule of thumb is always have a way to be able to know what your battery's doing. Multimeter, watt meter, cheap little gauges. There's no excuse not to be able to know what your battery voltage is. Remember, don't over discharge your battery. In other words, don't drain so much water out of it, it's gonna become flat. We wanna to stick to around about 12 volts um, to get it down to at the maximum. We don't wanna discharge any more than that if we possibly can do. Um, having a low voltage disconnect would look after your battery and stop emergencies or problems like accidentally leaving an LED light on or something when you're camping. Another fantastic idea. Remember when charging by 240 volts with an AC charger, don't have any other loads connected to the battery. We just wanna be charging the battery by itself. So these few little hints and tips will hopefully help you maintain your battery and it'll last you for years and years and years. Cheers. So if you found this video helpful, please click the like and subscribe button. And remember, click on the little bell doobalacky thing and um, you'll be notified when I do more of these helpful hints and tips videos. All right, cheers.